Imagine a conscious contact with God so strong that no matter what you are doing or not doing, that no matter what your kids are up to or not up to, and that whether you've got the person of your dreams or they're just not cooperating, that you are happy, content, and at peace. A space where everyone else's thoughts, attitudes, and actions are beautiful and exactly as they are supposed to be. Well, this is the space where I like to play. My name is Misha Z, and this is today's Bitch Slap. Join me as I shed light on the thoughts, actions, and attitudes that are causing you pain, and we train our minds to go to the capital S inner self, the joy that is waiting for us, the God within. I am back from camping, and I am beat down in a good way. What I want to relate that to is um, uh, upsetting my routine, upsetting my routine. And in this case, I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. So routines are awesome. They can be great. I've got a great routine of prayer, meditation, journaling, um, um, A Course in Miracles, you know, reading that every day. And, uh, and so this camping trip threw a lot of that into upheaval and definitely the timing of those things. And I think it was good. First off, I have been religiously reading A Course in Miracles for at least two years. If I knew the exact date, it'd be very fun to know. Coming up on two years, September, um, I believe, would be two years. Yes, because two years ago, September, I went to, um, where was it called? Yosemite. I went camping in Yosemite. So this is really cool. This camping trip was really cool in a number of levels. First off, due to the COVID, I hadn't been camping in two almost two whole years. So um, last camping trip I did was to Yosemite, which was beautiful and amazing. And we hiked a good 10 miles back in Yosemite. And one of the great things about Yosemite was laying on these granite slabs after swimming in ice cold water. So you hike all day with your 25 pound backpack, 30 pound backpack, whatever it is. And, and then, you know, you get to where you're going hot, sweaty, beat down me anyway. And then, uh, you jump in these incredible mountain rivers, streams, lakes, and then at Yosemite lay on these granite slabs that are, you know, had been baking in the sun. And it's such a cool way to connect with Mother Earth and soak in that energy. It's so powerful. Um, I had an opportunity to do the same sort of a thing up in um, Mammoth Lakes where we went. Iceberg Lake, so hiked all day. Lots of elevation gain. Um, and then to uh, jump in the iceberg lake, <laughs> which was cold as an iceberg, and then lay on the granite. And uh, so, so powerful. Just, gosh, there's nothing like it. Um, anyhow. Thank you for listening to that little tangent. I do. I love camping and I think it's so good to get out in nature and oftentimes away from people and, or away from mass masses of people. And then also disconnect from the phone. So there was no cell service at all for three days or whatever it was. Um, But I had just started a course in miracles when I had gone to Yosemite. I was probably two weeks into A Course in Miracles into the what's called the workbook for students, which is 365 daily exercises. Some of them are very um, intense and, and take a lot 
So it's not like a simple little prayer or, I mean, there, there's some stuff going on on some of those days in the or in Course in Miracles workbook for students. And so I was two or three weeks into it, you know, 21, you know, 14 to 21 of the daily exercises in, and I was absolutely committed to it. So what I did was I printed out the daily exercises and brought them with me to Yosemite and then did them while I was camping, which was awesome. And, uh, you know, fast forward almost two years later, what it's, as I record this, it's August 30th. Um, by the time this gets published, it'll be well into September. So probably the two year anniversary, but I have been diligently doing a course in miracles every day first it was the daily exercises and then after that it was the text section of a course in miracles and reading a section a day so each each chapter is broken into paragraphs uh, broken into sections so reading a section of a paragraph every day and for this trip to Mammoth, I thought, you know what? I am just not going to worry about it. I've got this great little, you know, one of the exercises that really resonated with me that I was doing right before I left. I'm trying to find it. It's nowhere to be found. Basically, one of it is, one of the headlines of it is, I will make, I will make no decision on my own. Today, I will make no decision on my own, meaning that will turn to source or <laughs> anti-source, the ego. Who's it going to be? Are we going to be? Are we going to be making decisions with the capital S inner self, God, the infinite intelligence, or are we going to be driven making choices with our ego? So I loved this concept. Um, but anyway, I decided. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna be easy on myself and let go of some routines. Every morning I meditate for an hour, um, and I have been for a while. You know, of late, the hour, um, you know, for sometimes I'll go through years perhaps where it's 30 minutes or what have you, but of late, it's an hour for the last year. Anyway, thank you for listening here. So, so I was like, I'm going to let go of my morning meditation routine to be flexible. And then my journaling, you're trying to save weight. And I said, you know what, I'm going to release, I'm going to release all expectations of this routine, of these routines. And it was very powerful. And when you're doing these eight mile hikes, there's a lot of time to focus on breath and make it meditative. So there was plenty of time to to have meditative experiences. Um, I just found it so powerful. It's so powerful camping trip. Um, I also wanted to talk about, I read man's search for meaning by Victor E. Frankel. And uh, I'll save the next episode part two for, for the man's search for meaning. Cause I think there was some serendipitous events that, that helped bring that about. So anyhow, um, very powerful camping trip. I'm back. I'm exhausted. Um, ton of meditation, ton of, uh, ton of meditation. So definitely there was plenty of downtime opportunities to meditate and I did meditate and there was plenty of, of, uh, hiking where meditating, focusing on breath, focusing on breath, and then lots of turning to God, just, just lots of consciously talking to source. Um, so powerful, so good. Just, I, I'm going to end with this. I, I, I had this backlog of 45 or so episodes recorded and due to the summit, I got, I, um, I've been bleeding off my backlog of inventory. <laughs> so of, of, of recorded podcast episodes. So I need, so I'm, I'm working on back to, I've said this a couple of times, but getting back to recording an episode every day. Anyway, love to all. 
get out there, go camping, get out there with nature, uh, mess with your routines for a couple of days if you can. Um, anyway, love to all. Thank you, thank you, thank you for spending time with me today. As someone who is committed to growth and service to this world, I so appreciate your willingness to come with me, go within, and serve our world through change. If you found value in this podcast and you know someone who can use this message, share this episode with them. Share it so our mission can be achieved one episode at a time. And of course, subscribe so you can hear more. And lastly, for more resources on what has helped me on my journey and can help you on yours, go to belove.media forward slash resources. That's B-E-L-O-V-E dot media forward slash resources. Thank you again for listening.